an abolitionist, communist. I, I just feel more moderate. I mean, I'll go about things as they come up. Since I am part Gen Z, everyone automatically says I'm liberal. Anyone is way better than the Republican Party. Economic-wise and what it can provide to the people of this country, I think the Republican Party is like the best. Being an independent, you know, it gives you a lot of freedom. I really wanted to vote for a woman really badly in my first presidential election. You might not be seeing the full picture and somebody else might be. And it's really important to always keep an open mind about things. My name is Michelle Loreni Aguilar Ramirez. I'm first generation here in the United States. My parents are immigrants from Guatemala. This pandemic hit me pretty hard because I had a lot of plans going forward. I also ended up catching the coronavirus because um, someone had came over to the house and they were too embarrassed to say that they had symptoms. Whenever I see someone on the street, I give them money or something, but my teacher always tells me that I should stop by and give them food instead because you never know, maybe they have substance abuses. It's not like I became homeless because I'm a substance abuser, you know. I became homeless because my mom had just lost her job and that's that. More taxes need to be charged to the people who gain more money. Less taxes need to be charged to people who make less money. Minimum wage needs to get raised and rents need to stop getting higher every time minimum wage goes up. My name is uh, Iskan Ordaz Ortiz. I'm 18 years old and I'm a freshman in college, uh, first generation. Mexican American. My dad came came to the States when he was 16. They had recently moved in. It was a, an apartment with over 10 different men. You know, he had to like go out to the grocery store and you know get his bananas and come back and you know just he had nowhere to put him, so he would just sleep with his food. I have everything really that they didn't have. I have a nice home. My parents have a decent income. What makes the American dream possible is the kind of free market economy that we have. I do side more with uh, Republicans on you know economic matters. My name is Janae Lisa Yuso. I go by Pink. Um, when I organize or when I introduce myself, I feel like it's just an easier name for people to grasp. My gifted class was a gifted class of five kids in elementary school. And four out of five of us had parents in prison. Prisons have taken more from us and have left us with scraps for families and for communities and I've never seen the rehabilitation part. Everybody knew like my great grandma who took care of all the kids on the block. So like, it was just a really tight knit community and I feel like had I not had that, I definitely wouldn't be a community organizer today because having that community showed me that we take care of each other. I'm probably the only communist in my family, but here's the thing. My Cuban family came here for a better life to escape whatever they say that they were facing on the island to still struggle here. Most Cubans are Republican. Like almost every Cuban you meet, like especially every old Cuban right now, like like from 60 upwards, they're all Republican. They hate like big government and the government just trying to take control of things so like that. My name is Jacob Cuenca and I'm a registered Republican. My grandpa is Cuban. They put him in the sugarcane fields of work off for nine years since he, they realized that he wasn't going to join the Communist Party. The Democratic Party wants to always like like help like other countries. So like at the end of the day, we do need to care more about the United States. My name is Marlene Herrera. I am 18 years old, currently a freshman in college. Both my parents didn't attend college, so it was very big for me to want to attend. When my mom had me, she was 16, so she couldn't even complete high school during that time. In a way, I wanted to just make up for it and work as hard as I, can, I could. I did not want to attend my neighborhood schools. It's not the same. You don't get the same funding from my neighborhood school, which was a low income area compared to Scripps, which is a much higher income area. My name is Brian Guevara. Um, I was born in New York, the Bronx, uh, raised in Greensboro, North Carolina. There's a long line of teachers in my family. Starting off with my great grandmother, you know, eventually knuckling down to me. I like to see a lot more funding going into, you know, schools. With most schools being predominantly white, middle-aged teachers, trying to teach, you know, African-American males, Hispanics, they simply can't relate to them. When I was relatively young, you know, I identified myself as an African-American. But as I'm starting to grow older, I'm starting to, you know, identify my roots, and I am an Afro-Latino. In the words of Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, 
I am an ordinary person who has been blessed with extraordinary opportunities and experiences. My name is Adela Diaz. I'm from Phoenix. When I was a junior in high school, I started tutoring at a middle school that was low income. Taking that kind of experience into college when I picked my major, which was public health, I was learning about something I'd already experienced. Like I had seen the lives of these kids and now I was in the classroom learning about their parents work all the time. They can't always cook home cooked meals. They can't always feed them the healthiest food and they're not always there to support them with school, which isn't their fault. Healthcare, like we need healthcare for all. Like this is so important. That's what's holding so many people back financially. We've already seen who has been disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Essential workers, what kind of people are those? Those are low income people of color. My name is Leticia Arcila. I am 20 years old. Um, I'm a Mexican American with immigrant parents. I have four siblings. Um, one who has uh, severe epilepsy. I haven't had insurance for like about maybe a year and a half now, and that's dangerous. And then you, when you think about it, you're like, how many Americans are actually dealing with that situation? When the whole Black Lives Matter movement happened, this is what democracy looks like. even though I wasn't the one being attacked, I wasn't the one that was personally feeling that, it was still everywhere. It was a hit to all minorities. It's either Biden or Donald Trump. The two sides have become so divided. A lot, a lot is at stake for me. Healthcare, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg dying and like a new president coming in and, and appointing a new Supreme Court justice. Uh, reproductive rights as a woman is at stake. It feels more, like this isn't, it feels even more than 2016 and there was already so much on the line. I feel like 2020 has identified everybody and amplified their identity. How am I feeling about voting? Maybe if I went in person, it would have been more like exciting, but I'm just gonna like mail in the ballot and just, yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of anticlimactic. Seeing the voting going up is actually great because it's like finally people, you, you're you using your right. Please go out and vote. <laughs> Our country depends on you to vote, please. If there was one thing that I could tell to thousands of people, it would be to go out and vote and make your voice count.